Why do you go on vacation? It seems there are two poles to this answer. One, to check out, or two, to experience new stuff. Why do we go, and what we do says a lot about us. Some of us go to attract a certain amount of boredom, because it feels good compared to a rather hectic day-to-day -day existence. Some of us go to exchange one kind of hectic existence for another. Every once in a while, I just want to check out. Don't we all? Supposed to clear the palate, restart the juices, open the pores. So last week, my wife and I evacuated to Jamestown, Rhode Island, Newport's little sister. For the checking out part, the location was not important. We practically threw a dart at the map. It was our intention to purely check out. Now, Jamestown sits across what I guess is part of the Narragansett Bay from fairly famous and very upper crust Newport. It was my intent to chill on a porch and watch nature impress me, catch up on some reading. Well, that worked right up to the little walk we took to a breakfast joint that served the best damn oatmeal with muesli and maple syrup that I have ever tasted. There we met some locals, and it seems the switch was thrown. By the end of breakfast, we had a list of things we just had to do, see, or taste before heading home. Now we had a choice. Stick to plan A or jump into a new plan B. Boy, does this area have history. Fort Adam is just up the road. It took 36 years to build and it was never attacked. And then there are mansions on Bellevue Avenue. This is how the upper tenth of a percent lives. Did I mention we took a drive over to the Whaling Museum in New Bedford, Massachusetts? By then it was Thursday and I hadn't yet found my porch nor read a single page. We drove out on Cape Cod to visit and dine with a friend, and I drove up to Providence for another dinner with our daughter's mother-in-law. Some family on these things is okay, which was delightful. My son-in-law has a really nice mom. But what about that chillin' on the porch? Hmm. Then there was the seven-mile hike called the Cliff Walk. It's a more or less civilized path between bunches of mansions and the bay. It's promoted as a three-and-a-half-mile walk. Portions of it have washed out, and you tiptoe across huge rocks with breaking waves a few yards to starboard. What they don't tell you is, it's three and a half miles back to where you left your car. Oh, and then there's the dining. How about eating in a 340-year-old White Horse Tavern and sampling about a dozen cups of different versions of clam chowder over a week? And lobster parlayed as cavalierly as hamburgers back here in St. Louis. So what's my point besides some public relations for the Newport area? I went to kick back and check out. I didn't check out. I checked in to another world, a new world, with new people and places and sights and sounds and smells. It was not, in the true sense of the word, relaxing. But it was invigorating. Some of it was even challenging. I think I can say my whole week was a flow experience, as Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, the author of Flow, would call it. I lost myself in the adventure. I lost track of time. I learned something about myself. I don't go on vacations to check out. Every movement brought me closer to new horizons, new knowledge, and new experiences. Yeah, a flow experience. It's Kim, and this is another moment of clarity.